I'm Christine Persichetti with this Currents News update. Nearly two weeks after the remnants of Hurricane Ida flooded the region, we're hearing stories of rebuilding and recovery here in the Diocese of Brooklyn. But Currents News' Emily Druby reports on one parishioner who was hit especially hard. You see the water came up to here. The flooding line still visible in Leticia's Queen's apartment. Mold now covers the walls. Tropical storm Ida flooded into her basement apartment, swift without any warning, leaving her desperate for a way out. For a couple of minutes, I was like, what am I going to do? But as soon as the water broke in, it, it broke the door. I just said I have to get out. Water up to her knees in five minutes. If she didn't have a second exit, she said she wouldn't have made it out alive. She's one of the lucky ones. At least 11 New Yorkers died in basement dwellings during the storm. They're not always legal, so there's no way to know how many exist. The city is working on a warning system for basement dwellers during floods, but it's not set to come out until 2023. Leticia thanks God that she's alive, but her home of 12 years is unlivable and all her possessions are gone. I work so many years for this to spend up on my feet and it's really sad but I think um, God is going to help me and I'm going to make it. She's facing a harsh reality. A two bedroom near her church, St. Mary's Winfield, averages more than $2,100. She's not alone, says her pastor, Father Christopher O'Connor. Like I have about five families that I know of her fact are homeless right now. Father O'Connor says the whole parish is pitching in and FEMA can help too, but that money could take a while. In the meantime, Leticia is staying with family and relying on her faith. My faith is what it has me standing on my feet because I have faith. In Woodside, Queens, Emily Druby, Currents News. If you'd like to support those impacted by Ida, you can donate to the U.S. Bishops Emergency Disaster Fund. Just head over to usccb.org and click Help Now. The money collected in this special appeal will be used to support the pastoral and reconstruction needs of the church, as well as the efforts of Catholic Charities USA and Catholic Relief Services. September 15th marks the start of National Hispanic Heritage Month, and our Jessica Easthope has the story of one Brooklyn priest who traveled across the country to support the migrants doing essential work thousands of miles from their own homes and families. That's it, oh yeah. Father Charles Keeney has things from all over the world in his office. But lately, this hat is his favorite. Yeah, we try to get he got there. it on a three-day trip to Yakima, Washington. He was there for a mission immersion program sponsored by Catholic Extension, a nonprofit that looks to build up Catholic communities in the poorest areas of the country. Okay, right here. Okay. There, he met Yakima Bishop Joseph Tyson. And it was really very inspiring to see what he was doing and what he was able to do with the help of Catholic Extension. Coming from the Diocese of Immigrants, Father Keeney found himself surrounded by migrant farm workers, there to pick cherries, 14 million of them a day to be exact. As the priest in charge of missions for the diocese, the purpose of Father Keeney's trip was to see how the church connects with the seasonal workers. Many leave their families back in Mexico and Guatemala for as long as six months at a time and come legally on visas for picking season and a chance to make up to $20,000. They would never make this money in their country. Most of the people who live in the United States don't want to pick the, pick the cherries. It's backbreaking work. Father Keeney says the experience will stay with him, and any pastor willing to go on a mission immersion trip will understand why. I could see the church in, in action. I could see the church alive, and you will be inspired. The trip with Catholic Extension showed Father Keeney just how far the church's teachings extend in reaching hearts across the world. Jessica East Hope, Currents News. If any pastor in the Diocese of Brooklyn is interested in taking an immersion mission trip with Catholic Extension, they can contact Father Charles Keeney at 917-757-8862. The plight of migrants and the need for countries to welcome them was part of the message Pope Francis brought to the people of Hungary and Slovakia. The Holy Father is back in Rome after a whirlwind visit to Eastern Europe. And so is Inez San Martin, Rome Bureau Chief at Crux, who traveled with the Pope and has been updating us along the way. She joins us now. Okay, first, 
Everyone wants to know what the Pope said when he boarded the plane, and it wasn't necessarily all about the trip. I know Francis talked about pro-abortion politicians and the Eucharist. As you know, U.S. bishops are right now considering a document on the Eucharist. So what did he have to say? He had a lot to say, but if you don't mind, I'd like to take a very short step back to say that everything and anything he had to say is because he was posed questions by journalists. So this is technically perhaps not what he had in mind, but it was what we wanted to hear from him. The question was posed to him by an English speaking journalist, um, of course, thinking about President Biden and the ongoing debate right now within the United States. Pope Francis on this was a little bit, um, if he was very unspecific, I would like to say he was very clear on the importance of being pastoral when it comes to this sort of issues. But he was also very clear when he said that those who participate in abortion, those who support abortion are outside of what he called the community. And by being outside of the community, you cannot receive communion, which of course is a long way of saying you're excommunicated. Even if it's temporarily, you cannot receive communion. All right, and speaking of safety, Pope Francis was also asked about COVID vaccines. There are some lawsuits over vaccine mandates here in New York. At least one has to do with religious exemptions. So what did the Holy Father say about getting the vaccine? This was also very important. He has been, he said what he has been saying, which is getting vaccinated is an act of love. But he did also acknowledge that there are those who have problems with the vaccine, who have doubts over the vaccines. Now, in his mind, or at least in his answer, that had nothing to do with the moral element that a lot of Catholics and a lot of Christians are talking about, which is the, is there any connection to abortion in the process of producing or investigating, researching for the vaccine? It had everything, however, to do with uh, being uh, suspicious of the fact that it was all done very quickly and that the pandemic itself was very virulent and very unexpected. All right, sounds good. Inez San Martin, Rome Bureau Chief at Crux. Thanks for updating us all week and now go get some rest. Thank you. Be sure to check in to the tablet.org to read all of Inez's reporting on the Pope's trip and more about today's press conference on the way back to Rome. The Biden administration is asking a federal judge to block Texas's new pro-life law. The Department of Justice's 45-page emergency motion is looking for a temporary restraining order or a preliminary injunction on the abortion ban while the administration's lawsuit proceeds through the courts. The law forbids abortions past six weeks of gestation, which the White House is calling unconstitutional. That is this current news update. The newscast will be back to its full length this fall when we move to our new studio. I'm Christine Persichetti. Thank you for joining us because we are putting your faith in the news.